Hi everyone! Because of the snow day, uh, we're going to have another video lecture. So please watch the entire lecture. Um, today we have a bit of housekeeping to take care of and then we're going to dive right into second species um, counterpoint in preparation for your first exam. So speaking of your first exam, it is going to be postponed. So you're going to receive your exam on Monday, January 23rd, and it will be due on Friday, the 27th at the beginning of your preceptorial. I also wanted to mention to keep checking the website, um, the calendar for your homework. Uh, some of them have been changed slightly to accommodate the changed exam schedule and also to give you a little bit more practice. And finally, uh, be sure you're staying on top of all of the information being distributed through the discussion board. Uh, there's been feedback on your homework, uh, some homework and quiz solutions and additional uh, tutorials, and also the opportunity to let me know through a poll what topics need more clarification. So without further ado, we're going to begin our discussion of second species counterpoint uh, by listening to and looking at this short example. So the question I would ask you is this, how does second species counterpoint compare to first species counterpoint? The most obvious difference is that now we have half notes in the counterpoint um, against the whole notes in the canis firmus, but you may have noticed other things. You may have noticed uh, a little more flexibility in how we began the species exercise. You may have noticed some dissonant intervals, um, maybe a little bit more in the way of leaps in melodic motion. And you should also, of course, have noticed a different type of contrapuntal motion. Ultimately, as we begin this um, journey into second species counterpoint, what you will need to realize is that you'll have a lot more freedom, you have a lot more choices in how you can compose your counterpoint, but that comes with a lot more responsibility. So as I mentioned, probably the first thing you noticed about uh, the second species counterpoint example was the half notes uh, rather than whole notes in the counterpoint. And what having half notes against a whole note does um, is it creates a metrical hierarchy. We now have strong beats and weak beats. And one of the most important things about second species is that uh, different rules govern our treatment of metrically stronger and weaker beats. So given that we have half notes against whole notes, the contrapuntal motion within each bar is going to be what? It is going to be oblique, of course. Between the bars, however, you'll note that we have um, another type of contrapuntal motion. It could be contrary, it could be parallel, it could be similar, but it will not be oblique between the bars, only within the bars. And that's actually really important because it will affect our choices, our melodic choices, as we compose our counterpoint. 